Today it's 12-15. Today is, what's the date today? Today is the 18th. Today is Father's Day. It is Sunday, June 18th. We have, obviously, you can see, we, uh, we got a little technical stuff. It's not technical difficulties on Lloyd's part. It's more about uh, just not having enough resources. But we figured it out. We adapt and overcome. We figured that, uh, we talked about that before the show. Special Father's Day episode of Mic'd Up here in Omaha. Um, we have a bunch of the fathers and the dads um, in, this, in this beautiful conference room. The team, behind, the team behind yeah, the, the team. team behind the team. This beautiful studio that we just, you know, made up as we go. Um, so we're excited to talk about it before we get there. Obviously, I want to give a shout out to everybody that's made this trip possible. Mic'd Up from Omaha is presented by Don's Specialty Meats. Uh, Don's is located in Scott, Louisiana. They are the boot. Scott is the boudin capital of the world. I'm sorry, Rodney. It is. It is. It is the boudin capital of the world. Uh, they <laughs> ship daily. Doesn't matter where you're at. They will ship if you're looking for any type of Cajun spices. Obviously, you see the hot sauce. You see their spices. You see this box. This is where the boudin is boxed in. Uh, they ship it if you're looking. If you're looking for any type of uh, Cajun cuisine, Cajun spices. Uh, you can find it at www.donspecialtymeats.com. They're open seven days a week. Uh, again, Karen Curl and Scott are their locations. They've been um, open since 1993, so they're on their 30-year anniversary. Uh, we couldn't do this without without Don Specialty Meats, so thank you for the support. With that said, we're going to talk about and we're going to recap some of the game later on in the show, but because we start a little later and because we're taking up the time on Father's Day, we're going to get right to it. Um, Father's Day for me, and I'm going to get a little sappy before we hopefully get a little fun. Uh, Father's Day for me means a lot. I lost my dad when I was four, and so I never got to really experience a lot of Father's Days. Had a lot of father figures in my life. Had a lot of friends, parents who you know were there for me. My uncles were there for me. And uh, so it's special for me, and it's special for me that y'all are all here to be able to share y'all's experiences with y'all's sons on Father's Day. Um, so with that said, let's have some fun. Let's not get too sappy about this. Uh, yesterday was the first day of Omaha, first game of Omaha. Nobody has been here and experienced Omaha, whether it be at LSU or any other school. Um, we're going to just kind of a round table. So what, coming in yesterday, as far as this week, what were the expectations in Omaha as far as, you know, being around your family, watching your son succeed, and going through your first game today, exceed your expectations, match your expectations, I uh, can't imagine they were lower than your expectations. Uh, how's how's the, the first few days in Omaha been? And whoever wants to answer, can answer first, then we can go around. Uh, I'll go. There we um, go. Being, I guess I'm the oldest day out here. Been here the longest time out shoot, but um, it was surreal to me. It was it was a wild factor, uh, more than I ever could imagine. Um, the grass was greener, yeah. the dirt was shinier, the lights were brighter, and just to watch these boys take the field because. I don't have one son. I have 27 that's on the field, and it was surreal for me. Um, how you go through life, right, as you're trying to raise your son, you're trying to put him in a situation where they can succeed, whether that be on the field, whether it be off the field, whatever it is. Um, how gratifying is it for y'all to watch your son be able to live out his dream? Now, obviously, some of y'all are from Louisiana. I've grown up watching LSU. Some of y'all are not from Louisiana. It's your first year here. Um, how has it been being able to watch your son succeed on the field, obviously as an extension of you? How, like, what is that feeling like to be able to see it? Because I don't have a kid, I don't have a son. Um, you know, can y'all speak about that a little bit? Well, I can tell you, like growing up with Hayden and, you know, some kids are different. I got five kids, so and every, kid, every kid is different. So kids, or have a driven motive. Some kids could care less, you know, and Hayden is one kid who's from day one wanted to be outside doing, throwing a ball, doing something. I can't tell you, man. There's the times you come home hot, tired, and there's a ball tapping me in the face. Let's go throw. I'm like, God dang, man. <laughs> so, you know, but then coming up, you know, you're like, you wind up coaching your kid, right? you know, because uh, that's just the way it is, you know, uh, and then, you know, people, parents are like, oh, this guy's freaking crazy, man. He's too, he's too hard on his kid. He's too, this is crazy. He's too hard. I'm like, what were you talking about? This is the kid pushing me to do all this. You know what I mean? Right. Like, he wants this more than 
I do, but I'm here to kind of help steer this along. Um, and you learn a lot. You know, you learn a lot with them and you learn a lot with people you get them around because that's really what it's about. Right. It's putting them with the people that can help them get better. Not just one person, it takes a lot of people. So, um, and then, you know, you wind up coming to a place like LSU and you see all these guys and you're like, God damn, I wasn't crazy. <laughs> They're all this like me, you know? <laughs> They're all me, yeah. They're all type thing guys, you know? It's like, God, I knew I wasn't crazy. Cool. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so Hayden, we got to spend some time with Hayden, and what I've noticed from him is he is extremely funny, right? He's like pretty charismatic. He just kind of does his own deal. Yep. Um, but he doesn't try too hard to do it. Mm -hmm. Is that something that he gets from you, or is that something that he just kind of developed on his own? Um, probably so. I mean, it's growing up around me, probably because I just will say whatever, whenever, right? And I just, you know, we'll have fun with it, you know. I, I don't know how many times I've been told I'm inappropriate, so maybe it's a little bit of that. I don't know. But, um, you know. I would have thought that. No, I'm <laughs> telling you. Buzz like thanks everyone. I don't think Buzz is going to say anything too. That's the thing, yeah. No, he's a, he's a good kid. He's, he's, a, he's, a, he's a way better version of me, you know what I mean? So I'm so aggressive and so competitive that, you know, I'm just – at your throat. I, when I played sports, I can tell you, I just wasn't that good of a teammate. I was too competitive. I was like, nah, if I wasn't playing, I was like, oh, bullshit, this guy, this guy. Right. But he is a kid, a lot like all these other kids, which I think makes this rare. Whenever anybody else does something great, he enjoys that more yeah. than when he does something great. You know what I mean? He right. really just loves that. So I like seeing that yep. in my kid. More than, more than any baseball stuff, you know? Right. The ability. <clears throat> so the ability to have you guys all here in one room, to me, speaks to not only what you guys have built as a bond of parents, but also what's going on with this team. We spoke a lot last week. We talked about Tommy. We had Tommy on earlier. And we joked, we joked a couple times since, which we haven't really been able to joke with him about it since, but we've been like, and I know he's got more personality than that. How are we going to be able to pull it out of him? So we met you. We were able to talk to you for a while last week, and you spoke about the enjoyment how great of a time he's having here and how he feels about this place. Can you speak on what LSU, the state of Louisiana, has meant to you guys in making the move here? Because I can tell you right now, when his name hit the portal last year, you guys being from Tampa, being from Florida, we thought, no shot in hell is coming here. So it was a huge surprise when he landed here. And now you guys are here. Can you speak about what it has meant to your family and how that has kind of played out? Yeah. Uh, he had his heart set on Florida State. Uh, Sully was calling also three, four times a day. Uh, I didn't want him to stay in Florida because of the contacts he had from the local high schools and friends. I thought he'd be distracted too easily being around people that he grew up with. And I knew where his focus was, what his goal was. So I was hoping he, we had no idea about LSU. I had no idea. <laughs> I know Skip Bird was from Miami. That's what I knew about LSU baseball. Right. I knew you because you were a wreck and we're season right. ticket holders. <laughs> so I, that's my knowledge of LSU baseball is Skip Burton was the Bear Bryant of baseball and Mikey Montauk played for our team. And like, <laughs> that's so, so that's all we knew. That's so <laughs> so uh, I'll be honest with you, we didn't think he was coming here at all. Yeah. Uh, his advisor said pick 10 schools that he didn't want to play for. We talked to those 10 coaches on the phone. They were down to three, and it was Florida State. Tennessee and LSU. And that was more of his advisor pushing him in the right direction uh, where he thought would be a good spot for Tommy to land. So he set up, we set up home interviews, uh, Jay Tuesday, Tony Vitello on Wednesday, and Mike Martin Jr. on Thursday. So Tuesday came and Mike Martin Jr. called and said, hey, I'm not going to be coming Thursday. I just got let go. So me and my wife were high five. <laughs> and the door, so we're like, oh, Tommy, we're so sorry. <laughs> you know, yes, you know. So, okay, so Jay shows up. He would think he was going in front of the board to give a presentation to close a billion dollar deal. He had pie charts, video of Tommy taking ground balls at NC State. Here's how many ground balls took back, and how many four years, how many ran at you. Jay is the reason Tommy's here. Jay is an awesome, awesome coach. And I tell you, he's, he's done a good job because he made Tommy a better person, 
Right. Not just a better fielder, a better hitter, yeah. just a better person, a better teammate, like you're saying, Jason. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just a, a good environment for Tommy. So we're he's so happy here. He's talking about moving here after he's over college. We're gonna get to that. And we're like, whoa, 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 we live in the water. We got to fish here. We have fish in the water, remember? And he's like, no, you don't understand. I love these people. These are my people now. Yeah. I go, no, we're your people. <laughs> and he's like, I dad, I, I feel this is home. Yep. And that's how he feels now. And just being here a year. And it's because of people like these dads yeah. and, and, and these players that their sons. They make him feel at home. Yeah. And he just, and you guys, yep. you, you told him, I think the first thing you guys did when you said, if you embrace us, we'll love you forever. That's how you guys are. Yep, absolutely. That's Louisiana. And I didn't know that. <clears throat> I'm like, you know, Louisiana, you know, crawfish, <laughs> you know, catfish, and then catfish in Florida. You know? <laughs> yeah. So, but, and, and then dad's made me feel welcome. Yeah. And my wife, and we just feel this is a good, couldn't have been a better spot. And I'm glad you said, because I was going to bring that up, because, you know, we played a lot of guys that are from Miami, all over New Jersey, all over. Austin, Texas, all these areas that kind of have their own, you know, culture, the way people like to be in that specific culture. And all these guys that we played with, you go through the grind of a season, you make a run, you win the World Series, or you make a run for the World Series, and you build this bond. And all of those families and all those players – now live in Baton Rouge. They found, you know, they married a girl from Louisiana. Their families, their parents moved in from, from Miami, from New Jersey. Like, so to your point, LSU is special, obviously, because of what you do on the field, but it's all the stuff that happens off the field. It's all of y'all, you know, to be able to, to, to the support group for, for the other parents. I'm glad you said that. So one thing that he's changed, which I know from last year, and he's thinking this year, which you were talking about being a good teammate. He was a good teammate last year, but it was different. Yeah. He went over five earlier in the season. I think he struck out three times. And after the game, I thought he was going to be on a suicide watch. So I came over and said, hey, it's going to be all right. He goes, he goes, I'm fine. What are you talking about? I go, I eh, know you had a rough day. Dad, I don't give a shit. We won. All right. I want to win for Kate. I want to win for these, you know, Joe Bear, these, you know, Dugas, these guys, four or five-year guys. I, I, I don't care what I did. Right. I'm like, who are you? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's just like a 180 from yeah. you know, because he, he's learned from these older guys. It's team. And all these guys have great players. They're all ego guys. They're all good egos. They're all great stats. But they all check at the door and they come for the same, right. the same reason. Right. They're going to be here. Right. And, and I'm so glad he's in front of these guys because next year he'll be one of the older guys, pass the torch. And he knows how it's done now because Dylan, Cade, yep. you know, Braden, all these guys, Dugas, they, they all, hey, here's how we do it. Right. right. And him and Abe became good friends. And they hang out all the time. Oh, yeah. And, and Tommy's over at Dylan's yeah. house. And, all the time, but it's it's like 2500, baby. That's it. I love that. That's it. A lot, a lot, a lot of, of the walls can talk in 4500, too. Oh, oh, sure. I can't imagine. There's eight years of stuff there. <laughs> <laughs> the walls are crazy. Any care about the stats? Yeah. I don't care. And you know what? By doing that, your numbers are going to end up being better at the end of the day yeah. because you're not worried it's about works. You're not you're not stressing over you know one at bat, two at bats. Yeah. You're worried about the other stuff, and then you take the pressure off yourself because now it's about winning. All right. He didn't care. And I was like, oh, okay. He, he, he got it. All right. it's, it's, that's what he needed to be and here. Part of what we talked about a lot on the show is, you know, they had a bunch of transfers that came in, right? Tommy, Skeens, all these guys, right? And then, but then you have a mix of the veteran guys, right? The fourth, fifth year seniors are from Louisiana. And then you have a mix of Dylan and the superstars that came in as freshmen who very much embraced, oh, you don't like that word? <laughs> he, uh, they, they very much embraced Louisiana, right? And they embraced LSU, and they have now kind of been that, you know, if, if you have a guy who's supposed to be the best player on the team and he acts like a dick and he doesn't care, like, you're never going to be able to win, right? And so you bring these transfers in who are superstars along with the veterans, along with Dylan, who's very embraced the, the team atmosphere. And I know y'all came out of high school, very highly touted COVID. You'll end up coming to LSU. It's not a lot of money to come to LSU. And you said it, he said it, it's been the best decision of his life. Can you go into that and what it's been like for these last, these last three years and you know, actually to be in Omaha and watch him finally oh, this, get the opportunity to win one? I'm, I'm not leaving. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I, know for, I know for a fact that he is definitely going to be either renting something or buying something when, when, when they get out of there, at least. Whenever, whenever the time comes, he is going to be doing something. He's going to, um, that's cool. We'll always be a part of 
fellowship. And we are already we're already talking about stuff that we're going to do after you know this year, wherever. Uh, hopefully that doesn't happen uh, until next Two week. Yeah, uh, whatever, however long it is. Twenty six, right? Mm -hmm. Something like that. Um, but no, I mean it's. Um, we made a point at the beginning of this, you know, beginning of the season. To, to, for all the parents, we've got a group text together, a group, uh, group meeting message, group or whatever you call it, that we let everybody know where the tailgates are going to be, what the team hotel, anything that wants to get shared with the parents, we we, uh, we use it that way. But what you see here is this is how we roll every weekend. We do not miss. Well, I mean, you didn't, you weren't able to make us work. But he's, you know, he's been a bunch of games. Well, this this group right here, man, we we are at every single weekend series game. Joey, uh, so like, as a as a man, like you always want to kind of keep growing, keep pushing yourself along, keep learning, keep being able to add value and do stuff for yourself. Your son was impressive when he showed up, right? But he was also an eighteen year old kid. Mm -hmm. From that day to today, by being able to come to college being able to be around a group of dudes that's obviously he's fallen in love with and has, you know they've all grown together what differences have you seen in him since that high school Dylan to year three oh, wow. almost out of here Dylan? not even I mean it's not even close that you've got you've got guys like Cade you've got guys like Hayden Dugas that have really taken him under his wing you know we, we got to meet Joe Bear um, before Actually, before you came, because Braden came and stayed at our house. You know, <laughs> before Dylan kicked out, okay. Yeah, before was that Delgado? That was after after Nichols. Yeah. Um, you know, Josh Josh stayed with us. They played on the on the River Rats uh, summer league ball together. And uh, like that. we've had I'm trying to think who else we've had. We've had a lot of boys that have come to the house before you know we even came here. Um, but just. The growing up part, you know, how he's matured, you know, mentally. You, you can't go to price tag on that. I mean, you're going, to, you're going. What these guys go through every single day. I mean, you're right. when you're playing baseball for you know, a program like LSU, and you're on the field a lot, a lot, a lot. And right. when you're not on the field, you want to be on the field, right. or you're, you know, you go up to you know the locker room and, and do whatever. Uh, I. Just the growing up part of it is, is uh, I mean, it was night and day because he, he was, uh, he was, he, there was no way, there was no way he would have survived. I, I truly believe this, that had he gone or gotten drafted out of high school, he would have got eaten up. And that's what I wanted to ask. I want to interject. Yeah. You could tell from the first time Dylan got into the locker room mm -hmm. compared to where he is now. Like, Cade is not, I mean, he is freaking very modest about everything, right? Dylan's kind of shy coming in as a freshman. Now it's kind of open, right? They have a lot of fun in the locker room. So yeah. we got pictures back in the day when <laughs> Dylan was a freshman of inside oh, yeah. locker room things that he's he's blossoming. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that and, that, and, that, and that's what I want to get to, right? Because a lot of the, the disco ball in the shower. <laughs> I, love I love that. I love that. You gotta have you gotta have you, fun. So no they have a head. disco ball. We used to have a sign. We're really gonna see what the sign says. <laughs> but the, Stuff like that matters, man. Oh, yeah. Funny yeah. As it is, They're yeah. dancing in a lot yeah. of the right now. Because that's where that's where the team camaraderie starts. Yes. It has to be in that locker room and everyone has to buy in. If you have that one or two guys that's not buying in, it just don't work. Yep. And all of these guys are playing together, doing it together. And you know, I'll, I'll tell you right now, I mean, every kid, I, I there's not they're all on it. Oh yeah. Absolutely. They're all on it. And that you, you mentioned the draft, right? Obviously, you come to school, you grow as a person. And I, a lot of people, there's a big, I guess there's a there's a you know 50 50 between oh should you go out of high school if you get drafted or should you go to college, right? I was on the side of going to school, right? Because of what you said, I wasn't I wasn't as highly talented coming out of high school. I had no chance of getting drafted in the first or second round out of high school. But had that happened physically, I was fine. It was the mentally, emotionally understanding baseball. I was not, and the same thing. He said I would have been eaten up in pro ball. So now, what you've seen over three years, mm -hmm. right? How much do you value the college route as opposed to going out of high school? I listen. I mean, the, we, we can't put the, the it. It's, it is getting talked about a lot. Um, but I, I've heard for Dylan, I've heard Jay, and for us, 
it was the best decision. That, that, like, hands down, not, not even looking back into, oh man, I wish we had play for all. It's, if, if, you, if you're going to play baseball, it's pretty, baseball's pretty hard. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you, 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 know, you want to have yourself in the best position possible for when you do get drafted, right? Right. So why make it harder on yourself when you're coming out of high school and then you're jumping right into playing ball with, you know, guys that are four, five, six, ten years older than you in some cases. And not a lot, I mean, there's a lot, you get a lot of people that don't, you know, speak English, a lot of Spanish kids right. that are coming up through through minors. Um, and, and it's just, it's, it's a whole different animal. <laughs> Whole different animal than what you get with, uh, with what these guys are doing in the yeah. locker room and on the field right. here. I think that's the biggest thing. You don't get the family side of it in, in pro ball, right? Everybody's trying to beat everybody. Oh no! Yeah. 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 And you're, and you're yeah. trying like yeah. wait for you to miss. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. I hope you strike out three times. Exactly. I'm not gonna say that. I'm really not that mad. At the same time. Too. So, 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 so the funny thing is, I got friends now that are their kids are. Eight, nine, ten, and the travel ball. Right. Because when Hayden and a lot of these kids were coming up, travel ball was just kind of really kicking off hard. Right. right. Wasn't hadn't been around for years and years, and the things that the differences now, even just in that ten year right. span, kids are. I'm not gonna say softer, but man, kids oh, yeah. are soft. Yeah. yeah. Like I'm talking about. Yeah. Everybody's got an iPad. Everybody's got a freaking switch in their hand. Yeah. Like, yeah. it's it's diff. It really is different. It is. I'm telling you, these kids. You, I watch them travel ball. I'm like, okay, man. Yeah. They're, 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 it, like they're the level of grit, yeah. the level of toughness. If you do have that kind of talent, I think the level of kids now they're making a mistake. If they don't uh, and, and here's the deal: once you get to a certain level, everybody's talented. They're not. Ex- oh, yeah. They don't. Ex- they just don't expect it. They yeah. don't understand. Yeah. But exactly. Yeah. Yeah. At that point, if you're doing that, and you go at some point, listen to me. I was in pro ball, and I started my 2019 season over 23. Right? I went an over 34 slump in the middle of the season in Major League Baseball when I was in Tampa. If I grew up not understanding how to get through that as a child and saying I was just, everything was just given to me or mm-hmm. given to, you know, like I would have driven myself, I would have had no idea how to, how to mm-hmm. overcome that, right? And it's not really, it's not about me, but that's just an example. And that's part of, to your yeah. point, like if you don't understand how to fight through that kind of yeah, stuff, right. it's not always easy. It's not always going to be easy. So I'm, I'm going to switch the gears a little bit. I'm going to touch on something a little different because I heard a story last night that gave me chills last night, and it's low-key kind of giving me chills again. So ninth inning, homers hit. I look back in the stands because I just wanted to see the reaction of it, right? And I'd see the unbelievable reaction. Like, I wish everyone could feel what you felt then. Well, after the game, the story you gave me, I was like, man, that's – Impressive. Can you share that story that you gave me last night? Absolutely, man. So we came up here. It was me, Braden, and one of my best friends came here in 2015, Bregman years. And um, LSU went to and out that year. So we're leaving the stadium. We're walking out the street where it's got the TD Ameritrade sign in the background. And he's like, he was 13, about to turn 14 that November. And he was like, he was like, Dad, because we're leaving, we're going home. And he's like, Dad, when are we coming back here? I said, the next time I come back, I'll be to watch you play for LSU. That's all. So, yeah, it like, you know, that's one of those, like, you're speaking into existence mm-hmm. and things, and then God handles the rest of it. But um, just just unbelievable. And for it to be right. the, the the road, like, less travel, like, it wasn't a straight line here. Uh, and it didn't yeah. just happen like that. Mm-hmm. Speaking uh, about his, um, the meaning of that, too. His journey has been <laughs> one like no other, man. Um, you know, he committed to Alabama as a sophomore. The coach gets fired a year later. Why don't you get mad at him, Lloyd? He came in Alabama. You get mad at me when I almost did it. <laughs> you're, you're, you should understand. <laughs> but, uh, he, uh, so he, he, you know, uh, Bohannon got the job at the time um, before he was bad. Dodged a bullet. Maybe he wasn't. Maybe he wasn't. He met with this man and um, he was like, he said, look, and he got a decent offer, you know, about, I mean, it was very expensive. I mean, we were going to pay a fortune to go there. You know, begin with, I'm like whatever, whatever, man. It was SEC at the time. You know, of course he wanted to go to LSU, but it was like SEC. Let's do it. Let's right. make it happen. And um, so Bohannon, Bohannon met with us, and he was like, "Man, look, I can't promise you the money that they've offered mm. before." He's like, "We don't have a pitcher that throws over 90." He's like, "We got to get arms in here." I'm like, "I get it." You know, so I left it up to Braden. He was like, "I don't think I'm gonna be committed." So. He did committed, and you know he had a few schools. He had talked to Nolan a little bit. They didn't have any money for him. 
Um, so either Gunnar Nichols, where I played, and I think he did that more for me and right. for my wife's family. He's from Oregon City, real close. So, um, and I think he knew right away when he got there. He was like, mm -hmm. uh, I don't think that this is the place for me. You know, fortunately and unfortunately, COVID hits. Yeah, right. right? right so right. it was kind of an easy out. Um, so he, he gets out of there. Nolan called like right when he went in the portal. Asked, um, I, I'm, I'm with one of my teams out in St. Francisville coaching, and, and I get a phone call from him. He's like, Would he be interested in coming? I'm like, Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, You want to call and ask? I'm like, I don't need to ask him. Like, this is an easy decision. Yeah. So, literally, that was on Friday afternoon. He's at George's house Sunday evening in Orlando. Like, they'd already flew him up to go play summer ball. Um, so, this was the year before the portal where you could transfer and be eligible. Right. So, um, my mom had just passed away and, and we were trying to do like a hardship to get him to go to LSU to be eligible. It didn't work out. So he had to go to Delgado for a year. Then he's about to go to LSU. Maneri retires. We're like, you got to be kidding. Like, it's all of them. Yeah. Like, you know, it was just, it was crazy. So, um, but fortunately, man, Jay got the job and embraced him. And, and um, man, it's just been so awesome to see this whole journey. It's been you know, just all the, the, the long nights, yeah. the craziness that's been going on with him, all the decisions have had to be made. I mean, this is this is where he wanted to be to, to begin with. So it was just an awesome story. Before we go on, I'll, I, the, the story, like the, the journey obviously is, you know, you just went through the whole deal. But as you're here, there's a different type of journey as, you, as he's here, right? Last year he had 18 homers. This year he didn't start the, the season in the lineup. He was in and out. And... You know he stayed with it right he, he did continue to do what he was needing to do to be able to get on the field and then he got on the field and they couldn't take him back off the field because he's been playing so well and then last night it almost caps off that journey right right obviously there's still more work to do but last night i, I don't think that we win i don't think this is an over exaggeration i don't think we win without Brady and Joe right it's last night like not a thing you know what i mean like that's <laughs> if he had the double the triple the homer the other ball was, was on the barrel like the way he was able to go out there, especially after oh, Tennessee right. scores yeah. the three yeah. runs. He's, single. he's, a, he's a single shot. He's a pitcher. He's a pitcher. He's a pitcher. So he would have had to sign it, right? Yeah. Yeah. The pitcher's Mark Man. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. right, and so you have, you know, we give up three runs, and then he comes back and hits that big home run, ends up being, you know, gives a lot of, momentum you can exhale, right? Yeah. Took the momentum away from yeah. him. So. Being able to see that and being able to go through that, knowing how the journey was, and knowing even what the journey was here, how does that make you feel as a father? Oh, how does that make you feel? I'm sure y'all are best friends. Like, can you just go into that? Man, just you know, from last year, you know, like he wasn't in the start lineup too. He gets hurt, right? And he's injected. He gets the first hit of the season, the first home run of the season, and then just kind of snowball from there. And then, um, you know, he DH'd 98 percent of the games last year. And that was one of the big things for him coming back. Um, was I, I want to be on the field. And Jay told him, you got to do this, 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 and this. And you need to be more athletic. You need to get faster. You need to be on the field. And then, of course, we got Josh and Kling and Dylan. I mean, like, it's a clogged mm -hmm. outfield, right? And, and and Tommy's coming in playing third. I mean, because he, he can play corners. Yeah. Of course, Jay's at first. So not not many places, you know, to fit in. He can really work. And, um, you know, I got to give him credit. He, he lost 20 pounds, worked his ass off, yeah. and, 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 and did what he had to do and just – you know, and then this year, just, just we, Bill and I talk about it all the time, man. Just they embraced each other so much, man. Like it, it wasn't nobody was bitter about not being on the field. Like he's pulling for Josh, Josh pulling for, for him. Just like They're pulling for Kling. You know, of course Dylan seemed it. So right. it was like, you know, it, you, three of them were fighting for two spots. I mean, it was just, but they embraced each other, man. Right. It was, it was, it was so awesome. How proud does that make you feel as a dad, man? Because you know, I got, I do. I respect the hell out of kids at that age who can go through the adversity of not everybody. Everybody that shows up here, you were the man. Like everywhere you played, you were the man. Everywhere you played, especially when you show up at a school like LSU. So to come here and have so much competition and have the ups and downs and be in and out the lineup, and then when you get a chance to just not let it go and keep plugging away, and keep plugging away. How proud are you to watch it? Well, for me, it's like the way the way Josh, the way. Brady and the way all these guys are, it doesn't matter how good they are. At some point, baseball's over. Mm -hmm. That gives me, that's a real good indication what kind of people they'll be. You know what I mean? Like, the, the kind of people they'll be in society. And guys like that will be successful. 
I, 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 I told them this all the time. I think like I, the way I look at baseball and or getting to professional sports, really honestly, is I, I think it, I feel like it's like a pyramid, right? You start at the bottom, there's a ton of kids playing baseball, right? Move on up, get to travel ball, some of these kids get weeded out a little bit. Move on up, get to high school ball, and you're like, oh man, that kid I thought was on my travel ball team, I thought he was good, but my high school team's really good. And I don't think he would play. Move on up, you get to college ball, and you're like, man, that kid that was all state on my high school team, he would not make it here, right? And you kind of keep going to where at a certain level, there's there's more good players than there is spots, yeah, right? No. And it just is what it is, right? And at some point, you start to realize that, and being here, this is one of those premier places where there's more good players than there's spots here. And y'all happen to have a, a, a team of really good players who got really good upbringing, who have bonded and meshed together to get to this spot because it wasn't a straight line, man. Like and those are the teams that went. Yeah, yep. it's not, it's not, you know, it's the talent. It's like teams, teams, teams. Like, yes. most teams, and they, these guys, like, they're the horse, yeah. right? And they they could go be the horse anywhere they go. Yeah. They come here, just another horse in the stable. Yep. It's a ton yeah, of horses yeah. here. Hey, yeah. Jay, Jay, told us, Jay told yes. us one time, he said, man, it's, it, he said it gives him, like, real <clears throat> confidence to be able to write a starting lineup, put those guys out there, and to be able to be in the mid game and kind of coaching this game and making the moves in the chess match and everything and look down on the bench and be like, man, I'm okay with like five more of these dudes getting right. this game oh, today. If not more. Like, right. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm very okay. Sitting on the bench right now. Exactly. Yeah. That are right. not playing that. I mean, you know, it's right. crazy. Mm -hmm. Nobody in here wants that job yeah. to make that money. Right. Yeah. No right. and, and to be able to do it the way he's had to do it is unique, right? Like the, the, the portal, it's never a thing before. Yeah. So to be able to have established proven guys like Dylan who's done it here yeah. to be able to bring a guy who's made a huge name and another conference at another team bring him in who, who could very well show up and just not want to be on board to identify the guys that you know that will do this to be able to bring them in and for now to be able to kind of culminate this into a family into a relationship to where they can grow and play and love each other, play together. Yeah. That, that's how you get here. Right. You know, I think you made a really good point though, because Jay's done a great job of not just good players, but character. Yeah. You know, yeah. These guys and Mike Thatcher and Paul, and they just all fit Tommy. You know, they all fit yeah. in. They all great players, yeah. but they all fit in and embrace the Tiger brand of baseball. Yeah. And that's not just baseball on the field; it's off the field, in the locker room, out in the community, being good people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he's done a great job at that. You know, this is crazy too. You think about. It. Starting lineup last night. Mm -hmm. Four of the players weren't the starting lineup the first half of the season. Right. Yeah. They right. sat there, were good teammates. Right. Dylan yeah. you know, and Tommy are yeah. they're cemented in, as you said, but their sons and their sons, yeah. they're waiting for their turn. So yeah. they get their turn. They made the most of it, yeah. but they were <clears throat> encouraging. Yeah. I asked Tommy, how the hell is it ever taken at the beginning? There's some of these guys aren't playing. He goes, Kate Bloss is the best you ever had. Because Hayden Travisky is the funniest guy I've ever in my life, yeah. Dad. And these guys, I mean, he's a real good job for the picture. And Braden is one of his best buddies. So, it wasn't no animosity, I'm not playing. Right. And here's these four guys are key integral right. parts of our success. Right. Who aren't even in the starting line at the beginning of the year. Right. And that's so right. important. They played big role each other last year, too. Yeah. You know? yeah. so. And it's hard to take a back seat. Right. Well, you know, you're last year. Let's, let's and this year, it's like, oh no, I'm not going to start lineup. And I know, I, me, right. I'm like, you know, like, hey, this is BS. Yeah. I, I, I'm on the field, I'm, I'm walking. Right. And these kids are like, no, no we're good. Right. And, and then you look at the end of the year and you're like, well, okay, plus I've got 14 home runs. Bessie's got double digit home runs. Joe Braden Joe Bear hits the game basically the game winning home run like yeah. saves the day last night. Exactly. They they take they wait their turn, they get the opportunity, they make the most of it. And you don't make that doesn't happen if you're bitter or if you're yeah. if you're not yeah. a good team. Yeah. And they're all they're all I mean just like you said, James yeah. bring character guys with quality right. You know, right. Right. Yeah. And it's a rare you yep. got to really pinpick who you, you know, this guy, he may be a superstar. Yeah, but he's going to be, he's going to be a sour apple. Yeah, he's going to be, 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 he's going you know, the glue in our, in our, in our, that's in our, in our, that's what I was getting at. That's not a prime example. That's what I was getting at. What we so everybody's got their own like, journey. This dude has been to every game. I mean, yeah. I, don't, I, just, I don't know if I could do what he's done. No, <laughs> I, I, I don't you, think you, every game. You drive three and a half, four no, hours it's every game. Like, it's, exactly. it's, it's freaking awesome. That's what I, that's yeah. what I was waiting. I wanted to, I wanted to give, because I've heard, I have stories, we've had conversations, and I know kind of, 
You're well, all it's blue. <laughs> <laughs> Can you talk about y'all's journey? Talk about what what it's meant for you and how you've been able to navigate through this season, being able to make sure that you're here supporting and being the glue yeah. for everyone. So unfortunately, you know, I have a whole different level of stress than these guys. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. So I'm the only picture dad in yep. here. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Just. You know, when Garrett went down, it was a, it was a big blow to to me and my wife, yeah. uh, even my daughter. Uh, but he's handled it well, and uh, we told ourselves, you know, we, we're not missing out on this. Right. You know, we became a family, yeah. and yeah. wouldn't know what to do with ourselves on the weekend if, if we wouldn't in that route. Right. Okay. So so you know, we just said, hey, we're, we're not we're not going to miss. Uh, we're we're still going. Um, you know, Garrett's Garrett's still there. He's still traveling. Um, Working with the team, um, so how's he feeling? Feels fine. Feels fine. It, actually, his arm, uh, you know, it took the tendon out of his knee, which gave him more trouble than his elbow. Oh, really? Yeah, I haven't heard of that before. Yeah. yeah. So, but now physically, he's fine. Uh, actually, working down, uh, working out downstairs right now. So, uh, uh, but mentally, um, he handled it very well. <laughs> Much better than me and my wife. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So he, he's handled everything well. Um, before he before he went down, right? So we we've talked about this a lot throughout, like leading up into the into the season, really. And so he came in; he was going to be a bullpen arm. He was going to be a guy that can throw multiple innings. And then he started to emerge as the guy, right? Yeah. The the closer to come in. Hey, he's going to be the end, he's going to be the the he's going to end the game. There's going to be no question about it. And he came out. And he did that exceptionally well, and he was dominating. And look, I felt like he was pitching the best he's ever thrown. Correct. Right while he was here. Um, how did that, like, talk about his his progression to that? What changed? Did something click? Did he do something kind of in the off season leading up to that? And obviously uh, the injuries suck, but, you know, being able to get to that point, he understands how to get there now, right? And I think the adversity is going to help him even be a better pitcher when he comes back. So can you talk to me about how, like, what went into that, the progression, the work that he's put in to get to the point that he was at? Yes, of course. So. So he had the knee injury last year, which right. shut him down for a lot of last year as well. And it, he, he knew he had to work his way back. Right. So when he had his exit meeting at the end of last year, Jake just flat out told him, and Garrett has said this, that he was honest with me. He's like, look, I don't know if I have a spot for you. You need to work and, and, and come back and show me what you can do. So through Christmas break, you know, all we did was work. Just he'd come home uh, and stayed for like four days at Christmas then he went straight back to Baton Rouge and hit the weights, uh, hit the field, him and Skeens, uh, Marceau even came in out there <clears> and <throat> threw a lot with him. Yeah. So um, he just knew that he had to do the work to be able to get on the field and, and he put in the time. Yeah. So you say that, right? And, and I try, <clears throat> comparisons are hard and trying to, you know, relate to other people. Thing, other situations, every situation is different, so it's hard to relate it. But for me, I like to try to figure out how to put myself in those shoes or a friend of mine that in those shoes. And you tell that story about the exit meeting. We played with a guy who played seven years in the big leagues. He was a SEC pitcher of the year, his senior year at LSU. He came to LSU um, and he was a freshman starter. All of a sudden started getting shelled. Couldn't figure it out, wasn't going to class, wasn't passing his classes. Um, and they ended up moving him from throwing over the top to submarine, and he was not good. And that guy's Lewis Coleman, right? And so Lewis Coleman walked into Coach Maneri's office before his junior year at LSU and basically had the exit meeting at the end of the year, and, and Maneri told him, hey, I think you should go and find somewhere else to play because you haven't done the things that it takes to win here and things that I believe in. You haven't been in class. You haven't been a great teammate. You haven't been <coughs> – person that we thought you were going to be when we recruited you and Lewis broke down and he said he begged for a spot he goes let me work my ass off let me show you that I'm a changed pitcher I understand this is where I want to be and he comes in the next year ends up going nine and out the bullpen with a 1.8 ERA ends up you know being the best reliever and then the next year goes 14 and 2 with a 2.8 ERA SEC pitcher of the year but I've also had teammates that have had those exit meetings and Maneri tells them that, and they, they transfer, and they leave because they're not willing to do that. So the fact that he's able to do that and come back, and like that's my only example of the positive side of it. I just try to relate that way. And so, you know, more power to him, more power to you, because you can't do that without your guidance and the guidance of the support team behind him. Right. 
Um, and so how, how good does that feel for you to know that, hey, you know what, he did get hurt, but I know that he's quit. you got to come back. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. So this is our third pitching coach in three years. Yeah. Right. So McGarry right. came in straight over the top. AD loved it. Uh, Jason Kelly sorry. came in. Now nah, let's move you down over here. So he had to go through that. And then Wes comes in. Hey, man, I watched videos of your freshman year. Why did you change? Well, I just did what coach told me to do. You know, mm -hmm. well, I want you back up, up top. So three different theories of pitching right, right there mm -hmm. from three different coaches. So, uh, I mean, he just, just basically worked hard and, uh, you know, did everything he could do yeah. to, to stay on this team. He never, after that exit meeting, the words transferred never, never come out. I love that. Yeah. Love that. And, and he knew he could. Uh, me and my wife even talked about it. Hey, what do you think we should do? Uh, but he never thought yeah. about that. Yeah. So. so we're in Omaha. It used to be a lot longer of the time. It used to be a full two weeks. It's not as long, but I'm sure by Thursday of next week, it's probably going to feel really long because y'all have been here. It's been probably a lot of, a lot of jello shots. A lot of alcohol, a lot of food. Um, <laughs> oh, talk about, just, talk, yeah, just a little bit. bit. <laughs> let's talk about Omaha. Let's, let's have some fun about Omaha. What has been the most ex most fun that y'all seen or the best experience you've had so far that you really weren't expecting when you were coming? Obviously, the baseball side is one thing. The, you know, being around your, the, your sons and being on and around the team in the hotel, that's another thing. But what about Omaha has been something that you weren't really expecting and it's kind of exceeded some expectations, if any? Anything? It's like... Uh, Bourbon Street. <laughs> I mean, yeah. like, it's packed. Yeah. Obviously, they don't have fire marshals around here because you can't even walk in these places. <laughs> so many people. That's the part that I that I caught me off guard a little bit. I mean, I knew there would be a lot of people here going to the game. Right. Like, I didn't know I was going to be party central for a four block radius. You know, pretty cool. Just I mean, seeing how how much LSU is, is really respected and and loved by wherever we go it's yeah. that, that's pretty cool too that's that, the bad that's, people I mean, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. that's just the way it's it's oh, louisiana yeah. people yeah you, I'm, you know, I'm impressed about kids not just with their respect and the value versus the way they travel mm -hmm. i know we have a lot of fans here but last night it was like well, you know we're 80 percent of the stadium right, right. on a twenty five thousand dollar attend or twenty five thousand people attendance we were 80% of the yep. attendance. Yep. Like, oh, wait till y'all win it. Wait till, wait till what this hotel looks like after y'all won the whole every, thing. Every single, one of, the games like, that LSU, yeah. every single one of the games that LSU plays is going to be like that. And I think yeah. I think it's pretty funny. I, I would imagine y'all would probably agree with this, but there's a lot of – like playing at LSU, especially in the winning season when guys are playing well, like there's people there all the time. You show up on a Tuesday – in April, and it's a six o'clock game against Southern, and there's eight thousand people there, right? Like that's that's not happening anywhere else. That doesn't like it really doesn't. Like it's just that simple, right? So you obviously get through the postseason of it, and there's a lot of people. Like there's standing room only. The stadium's packed, but coming here and like you said, seeing twenty five thousand people, stadiums filled, and you look around and you really do feel like man, this. 80 percent LSU fan. Mm -hmm. right? yeah. That's a completely different feel, and it's something that's it's hard to touch, right? You know what's funny is I had a conversation with Dylan right before we walked up here, and I'm like, "How was your experience last night? You know, first World Series game?" And he goes, "You know what? It wasn't as bad as I thought it would be because of all the people we play in front of every day. This was just normal for us." Mm -hmm. And I'm like, "Gotta make sense because you play in front of 12, 13,000 people everywhere we right. go. You know, every stadium is packed when we when they travel." So that, that was made you feel at home in a sense, you know. For me too, around town, yeah. like the welcoming of, you know, people from Baton Rouge and LSU here. But I met some great people, you know, to tailgate up here. We have a friend of ours, Kelly Ann. We met her, I met her in Missouri five years ago. We played up in Missouri. She's a, here, born and raised here in Omaha, goes to games, you know, every so often <laughs> during the year. And I kind of photo one of her photos. We start talking and then, She's like us in a female form, right? right? The tailgate, cuts up, clowns around and whatnot. So we, we came up here and she's like, hey, here's my tailgate, come and join. And yesterday we just bombarded her. Yeah. We had, I don't know, oh, 250 okay. people on the place. We had jambalaya <laughs> cooking, we had taco, we had all kinds of shit going on. Oh, I mean, we ran out of beer and we normally don't run out of beer. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, it was crazy. That's we had a great cool. time before, but it's just the embracement of LSU being here in Omaha, it, it, that's the surprising factor for me. Um, 
I know it's Father's Day. I appreciate y'all's time being able to sit down with us. I know we, we got started a little later than, than we wanted to, but you know, stuff happens. And I appreciate it's Father's Day. I know y'all want to spend some time with y'all's family. So I appreciate y'all giving us some of y'all's time on, on this day. Um, before I let y'all let y'all go, um, is there anything that y'all would like to say as far as, you know, if you could if if your sons can see this video, right? And you know, we'll probably cut it and so they can't see it because I know they're not going to watch the whole episode. But if they do see it, is there something that you would like to tell them, a message you want to give them that, you know, I'm sure you used to talk to them before, you know, all the time. But is there something that you would like to say on Father's Day to your sons um, right now, if there's anything? If not, I get it. But Man, I'll let you know. I tell mine. I, I couldn't be more proud of him. Like, every, everything he's done since he's been here, the person he's become, makes me who I am now. Makes me a better person. Amen to that. Yeah, that's what right. better city to spend Father's Day? No doubt. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah. After all no these doubt. cities you've been, all these hotels you've been in, <laughs> all the travel ball, all the sun you've been blasted by all over the years, and you get to spend Father's Day watching your kids in a stage like this. It's, it's pretty awesome. Yeah. Pretty freaking cool. Yeah. I've learned a lot from myself. To be honest, because I I was more of a selfish person as a player when I played sports, and I'm watching him around all these other kids and his mannerisms, the way he's handled himself. It's like I'm proud of the way he's become a good man, a good right. person, not just a good ball player. I mean, that, like everybody's going to be done. Everybody plays their last game, but he's going to be a good father. He's going to be a good businessman. Whatever he does, because I feel confident that he's learning from Jay, from the older players, how to act. Yep. You know, I try to teach them, but sometimes my way is a little more different. You know, I mean, Jason, you know, it's my way to I would. Yeah. And he's like, no, you got to relax, Dad, chill. And he tells me sometimes, relax. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> All right, you're right. And he's like, you know, I'm proud of him. I'm proud of him. Just who he's become and who he's become. So, yeah. yeah, absolutely proud. But the thing about the, being proud, it's the, the stage that LSU is, it's really – and to be the type of team and the type of kids they are, this is really like New York, Philadelphia, when you talk about the fan level. Oh, yeah. This is not like any other <laughs> no team. Doubt. No doubt. Yeah. Fan yeah. Level, when you're great, yeah. they love you. When you're sucking, yep. they're oh, on your yeah. ass. Yep. And listen, but you have, that's the deal with all these kids. You just have to love that and embrace it. And these kids, that they know that and can deal with it, man, that's a, that's shit, that's a bigger draft. Right. Plus than anything, Absolutely. like whatever team they go to, they're like, dude, we come from LSU, man. Yeah, this is whatever this shit is, I'm not worried about it. Yeah, right. <laughs> right here. Yeah. Yeah. There's three, yeah. four thousand watching us. Yeah. Eight thousand watching. Watching, you know, looking at Twitter and all the hate comments. Yeah. 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 Him and I have made really good friends with dudes that will literally tell us to our face, like, hey, man, when you were you were so good. But man, I used to cuss you out when you strike out like three yeah, times in a row. And then we take it back together. Like, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, I used to cuss myself out too when I strike out three times in a row. I get it. Fix up, right? Yeah, I get it. Like, it's okay. Are you trying to strike out? That's what yeah, that's right. That's that's what what I'm trying to do I'm trying to miss them all. Yeah. I'm trying not to catch no them. You know? No yeah. doubt. But that also makes the fans so good, right? Like, yeah. they're fans for a reason, right? They're fanatics. That's oh, yeah. fans. So it's like the, the highs are going to be high and the lows are going to be low to them. It's always the end of the world. It's always the best team in the world when it comes to fans. And it's, you know, how do you embrace that? How do you get through that? Um, you know, and then moving on to pro ball, it's obviously going to help you develop uh, that part of the game. So, uh, man, I appreciate, I appreciate this. This is awesome. We talked about it. It was, a, it was an idea. Um, I appreciate y'all getting us getting together and giving us y'all's time because this helps us a lot. Um, and I love, you know, hey, I've, hey, I've had the opportunity. We haven't said it yet, guys. We haven't said it yet, but happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. Yeah. Happy We've gotten the opportunity to meet y'all throughout the course of the last few years and, and get to know y'all and. Um, you know, I'm, I'm honored and I'm very happy and lucky that I was able to do that and you know, let us into y'all's circle because, you know, it's hard. You know, yeah. someone, an outsider, technically, coming in and trying to trying to get, get get in the middle of it. And, you know, I appreciate y'all allowing us to do that. So thank you. Thank y'all. Hey, I want to say one thing. I want to thank all of the boys, Caleb and Kate, for letting us enjoy this journey because without them, we wouldn't all be together yeah. doing this thing. So hey, thanks for a better ride, man. I love that. Yeah, so sure that's, that's it with a ring and a trophy, right? Let's go, baby. Let's do it. Go, go Tigers. Tigers. Go Tigers. All right, we're going to let them go. So you're watching Mike Tup. We'll be back in one minute. Uh, we're going to get them out of here, and then we're going to finish the show. So appreciate it. One minute. You're watching Mike Tup. We'll be right back.